welcome back to this part two of the topics chapter. How did you do in the first part? Did you manage to achieve that last exercise? Did you manage to publish messages into the command belt topic in order to move the robot? Yes, no? Okay, don't worry. Since this is the first, let's say, tricky exercise of this course, I will show you now how I did solve this exercise, what changes did I do to the to the code in order to make it work. So let's have a look. Okay, so the first thing you need to change is this import here, which it was originally importing the in32 message. You have to change it in order to import the twist message, as you can see here. And this twist message is contained into the geometry messages package. We have to import this twist message because this is the message used by the command vel topic, right? So the next line I've changed, it was the node. I give it a name of move robot because it is more accurate with what we are doing because we are moving the robot with this code. So I initiated a node, call it move robot here. Then the next line, when we create the publisher, you have obviously to change the name of the topic you want to publish in. In this case, we want to publish into the common file topic. And you have, of course, to change also the message. In this case, the common file topic uses the twist message. Great. Now, the next part of the code that you need to change, it is here, where we initiate the variable that contains the instance of the twist message. So here we create an instance of the twist message. We assign it to the move variable. And here we are giving values to this message. In this case, we are giving values to the linear x and to the angular z. The linear x will move the robot forward in the x axis, and the angular z will make the robot turn in the z axis. So if I apply an, a linear x velocity and an angular z velocity, the robot will move performing a kind of circular movement, right? Great. Now, finally, here inside the loop, I have removed the, the, the line where we were increasing the count variable because we don't need to increase the variable anymore. And I'm here publishing the move message which is the one I've created here, right? Then you need also to create a launch file, which is much easier, and, we, and which you saw in chapter one how to do this. So I will escape this part. And now let's just execute my package. That's it. I will launch the launch file, and let's see what happens. Great. So as you can see, the Kabuki Road BB begins moving, performing a circular movement. Great. So it works. Let's now stop the code. Okay. So yes, even if you stop the program, the road will keep moving because it is reading the last message that was published into the command belt topic. So in order to make it stop, I will manually publish again into the command file topic. And I will give values of zero. Great. So now it is stop it. Perfect. So now let's continue with explanation. So in the first part, in the part one of this chapter, you saw what is a publisher and how to create a publisher. And you saw that a publisher is basically a node that publishes messages into a topic. So a subscriber is quite the opposite. A subscriber is a node that reads messages from a topic. So we have the topic that we saw that is a channel, that is a pipe that transports information. Then we have in one side the publisher, which is a node that publishes information into this topic. And on the other side, we have the subscriber, which is a node that reads information from a topic. So let's learn a little bit more from subscribers. In this case, what I want you to do is to execute this piece of code we have here.
just as you did in part one, that you executed also a Python code. So now I want you to execute this Python code. But before that, let's do one thing, because maybe you still have the publisher running. So let's just topic, yeah, there it is. This is the node, you remember, the topic publisher is the node that contains the, the publisher that we executed in the part one, in the Python code of the part one. So let's stop this topic publisher by doing a ROS topic kill, ROS node kill, sorry, topic publisher. Great, so now we have stopped that topic publisher. So no one is publishing into the counter topic anymore. So now let's go, let's execute this Python code here. Let's go. Great, so it is executing because there is this asterisk mark here, so we know that the code is executing, but what's going on again? Nothing is happening. What do you think? Well, there are actually some things going on, but again, you are not able to see them, at the first sight, at least. So let's do some checks, as we did in the in the part one of this chapter. So the first one is to do a ROS topic echo of the counter topic. Okay. Yeah, so we have here this message which says no message is received and simulated time is active. Okay, this means that nobody is publishing into the counter topic. This is why we are getting this message. So nobody is publishing into the counter topic. Great. Okay, so let's change this. Let's publish into the counter topic. But we will do it manually this time. We won't create a publisher in a Python code. We will do it manually. So let's execute this command here. ROS topic pub. ROS topic pub. Counter. We specify the topic we want to write in. We specify the type of message we want to publish, which if you remember it was the int32. Finally, we do a double tab that we are out to complete the structure of the message. Now I will give a value here, for instance, let's say five. Okay, so let's go back again to the echo. Oh. So now, as you can see, it has appeared here at the number five, a number five. This is the number five that I've published here with the rust of path. So now it appears here. And that's not all, because if you go up here to the code, you can see that here below the code, it has also appeared a number five. Interesting. So what's going on? What do you think is going on? Can you guess? Okay. In order to explain this a little bit better, let's have a look at the at the code and what actually this code you have executed does. So let's maximize a moment this in order to see better the code. Okay, so let's explain now this code. The first line, as always, is the import RASPI. Then here we are importing again the int32 message. Then here we have a callback. And inside this callback we are doing a print of the data variable of a message. Okay, let's leave it at this point now. Then here we are initiating a node that is called topic underscore subscriber. You already know what this is. So finally here we have the key line. Does it sound familiar to you? It's very similar to the line where we created the publisher, right? So here what we are doing is to create a subscriber object. And we are specifying that we want to subscribe to the counter topic which contains messages of the type int32. And then we have here a callback. What What is this callback? This callback is indicating that each time that this subscriber gets a reading from this counter topic, it will call this callback function. 
So while the subscriber is running, each time there is a publication, it's, each time it gets data from the counter topic, it will call this callback function, which is the one that we have here, and it will get the message and it will do a print of the data variable of that message. Everything makes more sense now. So basically, by executing this code, what we have done is to start a subscriber which was subscribed to the counter topic. Then, as you saw initially, nobody was publishing into the counter topic. So nothing happened because nobody was publishing there. And it doesn't matter if we are subscribed to a topic because if that topic has no information, nothing will happen. So then when we publish it into that topic, we publish it at number five, the callback function was called and it printed the data variable of that message, which is why we are seeing here this number five, because this callback function was called and it, and it did this print of the data variable, which is this number five. Got it? Everything makes more sense now? Yes? Great. So let's move on. And let's do this exercise 2.3, which is quite similar to the one we you did at the end of, of the part one. So now I want you to create another package and inside that package you will copy this code here. You will copy the code that you have just executed and you will modify it so instead of reading Instead of subscribing to the counter topic, it will sus subscribe to the odom topic, slash odom. Let me show it to you here. I will do a ROS topic list. So here you can see that we have a odom topic. So in your package, I want you to modify this code. So instead of subscribing to the counter topic, it will subscribe to the odom topic. And then it will print information the information that this odon topic contains. Okay, so that's all. You have here some data that can be useful in order to complete the exercise. So I will give you now some minutes so you can finish this exercise and I will see you back in a moment. So goodbye and see you in a moment. Don, did you manage to complete the exercise? It was quite easy, right? Great, but don't relax too much because we are going to do another exercise right now. So we are going to the exercise 2.4. So now what I want you to do is to add to the previous package, to the package that you have created for the subscriber, I want you to add a Python file that contains a publisher again. And this publisher will publish the age of the robot. And how will you do that? How will you publish the age of the robot? Well, for that, you will have to create a custom message. You won't be using in32, you won't be using twist, but you will be using a message that you will create, a custom message. So how can you create a custom message? Okay, let's follow these instructions here. In this case, I will do it with you because the first time it may be a little bit tricky, so I will be with you in this process. So let's go. The first thing we need to do is to go to the package where, where we will put that message. In this case, I will put it here in the My Publisher package, but you will have to put it in your subscriber package, right? Okay, so let's go. I go to my publisher package and I create here a msg directory there it is there it is so I have created into the package I want to put my message I have created a msg directory 
great. Now, inside this directory, I will create a file, name it h.msg. So let's do it. h.msg. Create, great. And now inside this file, I will copy this information here. Let's put this right. Great. So the structure of my message, of the eight message, will be composed of three parts. First, we'll have a float that will indicate the years, another float that will indicate the months, and finally, another float that will indicate the days. Great. So we have created this message directory, and we have put a file in it that defines our H message. Perfect. So now the next step is to modify the cmakelists.txt file. This may be the tricky part, the most tricky part of creating a custom message, so pay attention to all the steps I do. So first of all, I will open this cmakelists.txt file. Great. And now I will find this find package function. So how can I do this? In this case, I'm seeing it right here. But in order to find any kind of a string into a file, you can do a control F or a command F if you are working in a Mac. And it appears this pop-up. And here, I can put, for instance, find package. And let's move this. And as you can see here, it takes me to the first fine package. And if I keep going, it takes me to the second fine package, which is the one I'm, in, I'm interested in. So now let's close this. And here, inside the find package, I will see that I have just one line, which is saying Rospy. Now here, I see that it contains more lines. So I will modify my CMake list so it looks like this one. So here, I will add standard messages and the message generation great and i will save this file but we are not done next step we will move to the catkin package function so let's find this catkin package okay it is not this one the one that i want so i will keep finding okay so here, I have the one that I'm interested in, this function here. So I need to make this function look like the one I have here in the notebook. So the first thing I will do is to uncomment the catkin depends line, which is here. So this line, I will uncomment it. Great. And as I can see here, after the catkin depends, I have message runtime. So I will add this message runtime right here. Message runtime. And I will save again. Great. So now I have this Catkin package with the Catkin depends uncommented, like it is here. And I have added this message runtime, which is was missing in my CMake list file. Right? Great. So let's move to the third step which is going to the add message files. So I will find again the add message files function. Okay, let's see. There it is, great. So I will close here. And again, I will need to comment some lines in order to make it look like this one. So we need to comment this one, this one, and this last one as well in order to make the function active. And then I will also comment one of the messages, but I will need to change the name here because I have message one. And I want to put my message, which is called h.message. Great. So I will save again. And finally, the last thing we will need to modify in the CMake list files, it is in the generate messages function. So I will find again this generate 
messages function okay it is here great and I will again uncomment this to make it active and I will comment also the dependencies and the standard messages line okay so it looks like everything is looking like here so great I will save again this file and now I'm done with the same make list txt file but I still need to modify the package.xml as well so I will open now the package.xml Here it is, and I will go to the build dependencies. Okay, here I just have Rospy as a build depend, and I see here I have message generation as well as a build depend. So I will copy this line, and I will put here the message generation. Great, and as a run depend, I see that I also have the run the message runtime. Sorry, so I will as well copy this line and I will put here the message runtime. Great, so now I'm done. I have modified the semi list and the package XML, so now my package is prepared is prepared to compile my message and to be able to use my message. So now what I will do is to compile the message to see if I have done everything correctly. So let's do that. Remember, in order to compile, you need to be in the Katkin workspace directory. Yes? So let's do the Katkin make in order to compile. Okay. Let's see if everything goes fine. Perfect. So apparently everything went well, compilation went well. So now, if I do a ROS message show of age, perfect. Now I can see that my message has been compiled correctly and it is ready to be used. So now I want you to complete the exercise, the 2.4 exercise by your own. I will not help you anymore. So complete this 2.5, 2.4 exercise and add to your package a Python code, the Python code of a publisher that will publish this H message. So I will leave you again some minutes in order to complete this exercise and I will see you back when you are done. So see you in a moment. So are you done? Did you manage to complete the exercise? Did you manage to publish this H message into a topic? Great. So now in order to end this topic chapter, I will give to you a mini project. Let's make it bigger. Perfect. So the last, the last part of this topic chapter is to do a mini project. And what does this mini project consist of? So basically, what you will have to do is to make your Kabuki robot avoid this wall here. And in order to do this, you will have to use everything you have learned in this chapter, publishers, subscribers, and so on. So this mini project consists of making your Kabuki robot detect and avoid this wall. So in order to make it a little bit easier, here you have some steps. We have divided this project in three smaller steps that you need to accomplish in order to complete this project. So the first one is to create a publisher that writes into the common bell topic in order to move the robot. You already know how to do this because you've done it in the final exercise of the part one of this chapter. So you already know how to write into the common bell topic in order to move the robot. Then the second step will be to create a subscriber that reads information from the Kabuki laser scan topic. In this part two of the chapter, you have created a subscriber that reads information from the Odom topic. In this case, 
you will need to create a subscriber that reads information from the Kabuki laser scan topic. Why from this topic? Because this topic is a topic that contains the information that the laser of the Kabuki robot is reading. So you can see here in the robot, if you zoom it, here we have a laser. And this laser is constantly reading information into this Kabuki laser scan topic. So you will need to get a subscriber that reads information from this topic in order to know what the laser of the robot is seeing, in order to be able to see the environment, in order to be able to detect that wall. And finally, Sorry. There you are. And finally, you will have to analyze the data you read from that laser, the data you read from this Kobuki laser scan topic, and depending on the readings you have, you have to modify the commands you are sending to the command well topic in order to avoid the wall. So, you will start moving the robot forward and the laser will detect that there is something, that there is an obstacle in front of the Kabuki. Then, when you get that data from the laser topic, you have to move to make the robot turn in order to avoid this obstacle, in order to avoid this wall. Yes? Got it? You are a little bit scared now? Don't worry. Here, you can follow some hints. We have some hints. You can see here hint one, hint two, hint three. These hints will help you to complete this exercise. And if you are still not able to solve it, if you get too stuck in some point, don't doubt to contact us. You can you can write in the forum or whatever and we will try to help you and we will help you to complete this exercise. But I think that with all you have learned in this chapter, you are able to complete this mini project. So that's all for this topics chapter. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you have learned a lot. I want you to know that topics are one of the most important parts of ROS, so you need to know them very well. And well, I will see you in the next chapter where we will discuss about ROS services. So good luck with the project and see you in the next chapter.